I'm Sean Duke McFadden, a.k.a. Trife Gangster, uh, Executive Director of GMAT, Gangsters Making Astronomical Community Changes. That's GMAT, Gangsters Making Astronomical Community Changes. And we had our fourth annual uh, Not My Hood, March Against Senseless Violence with uh, Jemani D. Williams, East Flappers Village. And of, of course, us out there supporting that initiative. And I'll go to the street, the street perspective, man, just getting these... You know, the shooters, the guys in the streets, the hoods, the gangsters, you know what I mean, the thugs, whatever you want to call them. To look at it from a different perspective, you know, we got to wake up and realize that we losing by taking lives and picking up the guns at the rate that we're doing that. And that's really our, our goal from coming out here and supporting today. We're coming from that perspective, Stri strictly the streets. We're not, a, you know, we're not in an office, we're not in, in law enforcement. You know, we support our community, and that's just our job. I, I talk about that. I went to the Boys and Girls Club, and I spoke to the kids about that same incident, about the... Um, Four, the 15, 14 year old on the bus and I, I showed them I showed them part, parts of it that they don't really get to see how all those people on the bus that's the charge of reckless endangerment and they got a right to charge him with reckless endangerment for every person that was on that bus and that in itself is about five years three years depending on what they want to give him per person you know so they, that, that young boy at 14 years old will never see the streets again I don't care how much people try to advocate on his age what he did was wrong you know we, we, we say oh he's young man forget all that that's the, that's the train that we talk about. That was the wrong mistake, and that's what's going to happen. You expect to be there 30, 40, 50 years, you know, at 14. So that type of time, you, you, you can't expect to come back into society. So they give you an AK-47, a Mac-10. They give you weapons that are rejects. The damn thing don't even shoot straight. So you go to smoke your brother and a baby is killed. Somebody innocent is killed on your foolishness. And you don't think that you got to pay a price for this. Broad daylight, you coming, you picking up a gun, and you shooting, a, you, you shooting, you shooting somebody who ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That's cowardice, you know. It's like people think that when you pick up the gun, that makes you tough, that makes you a gangster. It doesn't, you know. When you do something like that, what type of respect do you get for that? You know. So we got to bring that whole perspective back, right, man? Stop, stop looking at it as if you you are tough, you're a gangster because you run around and you can shoot a gun. Look at Columbine. Look at look at Sandy Hook. You know, look at those, you know, people that pick up guns. When somebody went and shoot, shoot up Sandy Hook, does that make them a gangster? That makes them tough? Does that, nah, it's not a set to kill kids. So that shows that anybody can shoot a gun. It's, it's nothing in that no more. And that's what we got to bring to the table, get these kids to put these guns down. And we want to take... We want to take the negativity out of, the positivity out of being negative. That's our goal. Take the positive away from being negative. Take the, the goodness out of it. There's no good in being negative. There's no good in causing harm to your hood. And that's why we out here. We want to get in Brownsville. We want to work with every organization that's out in Brownsville. You know what I'm saying? Com coming together. It's about unification. So if we unify and go to these communities and say, Brownsville, y'all need us. We need help. Y'all need help out here. We need help out here. Because even though we, we may not live directly out there, that's our community. So we want to do everything that we can to support Brownsville. And you guys are used to talking down the potential shooter. Explain how that works. Yeah, we talk them down. I was talked down. I, I, I was in a gunfight many years ago, and I actually had holes in my jeans. And um, I was I was lurking like six in the morning, in the, in the lobby of my building, and I saw the guy. He was he was actually selling crack to um, somebody. And I'm waiting for him to finish selling crack because you know where I come from, we we deal with morals and principles. So I don't want to hit anybody that was innocent. And as I'm waiting for him, his brother, who, who's I'm very um. His brother, me and his brother was very close, and his brother was coming down to see him and saw me. And when he saw me, he knew what I was waiting for his brother. And he actually began to talk to me. You know, and he actually taught me that from shooting his brother. Me and his brother ended up talking it out. So that concept was something that later on, as I made my change in my life, was something that I, I grasped and I realized how it works for me and that's what we do we you know if, if, if somebody is going to pull up a pull out a gun and shoot somebody always knows so if you get people to step up before that gunfire comes out and say yo listen nah that's not it's not really worth it look at the look at what the situation is then you talk people out of shooting you have more people now ag aggravating the situation inciting the situation and we got to stop the incitation and bring down the level by being the ones who talk it down that's the whole concept don't shoot I want to grow up don't shoot, I want to grow up. Listen to the message.
It's very important to understand why we out here. Don't shoot. I want to grow up. When I say that, I'm not speaking for myself because I've grown up. I say that because I'm speaking for our children. I say that because our children don't have the voice. They don't have it because our leaders are not out here doing the things that needs to be done. And when I speak about our leaders, I'm not speaking about our elected officials. I'm not speaking about our speakers. I'm not speaking about our law enforcement. I'm speaking about our leaders in these streets. I'm speaking about those who are out here taking these young brothers and turning them into shooters that are not trained to shoot. This is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who know how to stop the shootings from happening in the community and not doing nothing to step up. It's time for our kids to be safe in these streets. It's time for our kids to be able to go to a party and not have to worry about being shot. It's time for us to be able to have a barbecue and not have to hear shots. It's time for us to see a basketball game and see the winners win and not have to hear shots. Enough is enough for that. I don't come from a law enforcement perspective. I don't come from an elected official perspective. I come from the street perspective. I am the streets. And gun violence can go down. We have to minimize the level of shootings in our community first. And we speak from organizations like myself. Jumani Williams spoke earlier about organizations such as Man Up. Numbers is everything. The work that Man Up has done along with other organizations like I Love My Life, SOS, G Mac, of course, we are in these streets. Our numbers are not being counted because we don't get the support that we need from the communities. And when I say the support, I'm not just talking financial. I'm talking about those men who know what it takes to talk the shooters down. We need y'all to step up. That's what it's going to take. So while we talking about taking the guns out of the community, we got to focus on the mindset of what's happening in the community. It is a mental condition. We have been taught to look at homicides as a way of, of, of recognition. We support it where we come from. It's time to stop that. It's time to take the popularity out of negativity. Right. Listen to that. Take the popularity out of negativity. Yeah, take the right. popularity out of negativity. Right. When our kids stop thinking it's cool to kill somebody, we're going to change lives. When our kids think it's, stop thinking it's cool to be part of gangs, we're going to change lives. And this is what we out here doing. We out here when the cameras are not out here, we, so, so many faces know who we are and we know who they are because they're doing the work. So we need all parties to step up. We need people that we know are in these streets to come to us. If you made that change in life and you know what it takes, come to us. It's actually a job. If you ain't got a job, we're going to help you get a job. A job being out in these streets and stopping our kids from killing each other. That is our mission, and that's what we are here to do. Thank you. Gun violence affects us. Dustin Heath's mother is from Glenwood. She now lives upstate New York because she couldn't hear the gunshots anymore. When her son died, it changed her life. So sometimes we think it's just that person, that life that's lost, that's affected, but we don't think about the family. Think about a person having to hear gunshots and can't sleep, can't think, and got to leave where they, where they were comfortable because their son or their daughter or their brother, their sister lost their life. And right here, as we stand in front of New York Trash Cafe, young Dustin Yeats, great potential, basketball player, music artist, coming out of this club one day, lost his life, and there's never been a conviction in his death. We take our moment to respect, no arrest. Forget about conviction, no arrest in his, in his death. So I'm gonna show, at this moment, we're gonna give a moment of silence for Dustin Yeats. With dust and yeats. Anybody knows Miss Donna Rayside? Tell her we did not forget her. We did not forget her son. Let's ride.